Hello everyone, and thanks for joining us. In this paper, we present a cache poisoning attack targeting DNS forwarding devices. We find that several forwarder implementations are vulnerable and call for mitigation. Our findings also raise more attention to DNS forwarders, which could be a soft spot in the DNS infrastructure. Today's DNS infrastructure has been far more complex than its original design. DNS forwarders are devices standing in between stub and recursive resolvers. A typical DNS forwarder takes queries from DNS clients, and instead of performing lookups, it relies on an upstream recursive resolver to handle the resolution. DNS forwarders can serve as convenient default DNS servers with caching abilities and are widely deployed on residential network devices, such as home routers. Despite of their prevalence, there is still a lack of DNS forwarder implementation guidelines, and their unique position is exploited in our attack. Traditional DNS cache poisoning attacks target recursive resolvers. An attacker forges DNS packets with matching metadata, including ephemeral ports and DNS transaction IDs, and tricks resolvers into accepting the rogue responses. However, after the adoption of randomization defenses, it has been more difficult for the attacks to succeed. We present a cache poisoning attack which targets DNS forwarders. The attack is based on DNS response fragmentation, and the attackers can use their controlled domain names to poison any victim domain. In our threat model, the attacker and DNS forwarder locate in the same local network. The setting can occur in an open Wi-Fi network, such as those of coffee shops and airports, or an enterprise network with guests. On the other side, the attacker establishes a controlled authoritative server. And the key insight which makes the attack possible is that DNS forwarders typically rely on the integrity and security checks of upstream resolvers and hence do not perform additional checks on the responses they receive. While the upstream resolver can be immune, the attacker has a chance to tamper with responses that are sent back to the DNS forwarder. At the controlled authoritative server, the attacker configures an oversized DNS response. The response uses a chain of C name records followed by a final A record and is larger than 1,500 bytes, this Ethernet MTU. And as a result, the response will always be fragmented during transfer. To poison the cache of DNS forwarders, the attacker will attempt to tamper with the second fragment of the response. The spoofed second fragment does not have UDP or DNS headers, so there is no need for the attacker to guess ephemeral port numbers or DNS transaction IDs. And using CNAME, it is possible to point the attacker's domain to any victim domain. The attacker's goal is for the DNS forwarder to cache the last A record separately, which points the victim domain to a rogue address. The forged response will be rejected by a recursive resolver because the tampered CNAME chain will not pass verification. However, as DNS forwarders lack such checks, they are vulnerable to this attack. And here is the entire flow of the cache poisoning attack targeting DNS forwarders. The attacker first crafts a spoofed second fragment which contains rogue records of the victim domain. In this fragment, the only field that needs prediction is the 16-bit IP ID of the upstream resolver. By measurements, we find that a number of open DNS servers and public DNS services use global or hash-based IP ID assignments, which are predictable. The fragment is then sent to the DNS forwarder and will be cached to wait for reassembly. The attacker then issues a DNS query of the controlled domain name. The DNS forwarder passes the DNS query to its upstream, 
and the recursive resolver will follow the aliases and fetch the entire CNAME chain from the authoritative server. The oversized DNS response is then aggregated by the upstream recursive resolver and sent back to the DNS forwarder. Because the response is larger than the Ethernet MTU, it should always be fragmented on its way back. And finally, when the response arrives at the DNS forwarder, the legitimate first fragment will be reassembled with the spoofed second fragment that has been cached because their IP IDs match. And as we discussed earlier, because DNS forwarders lack security checks, they will not notice that the response has been tampered with and will accept the rogue DNS answers. If the victim DNS record is cached individually by the forwarder, next time when the victim domain is queried, the rogue address will be returned. From a threat model, we conclude several conditions that a DNS forwarder should satisfy in a successful attack. First, the attacker only tampers with the last record of the oversized response. For subsequent queries to hit the cache, the victim DNS record should be cached separately, instead of the entire response being cached as a whole. In fact, the DNS standards do not specify which caching behavior should be adopted, but through tests, we find that most implementations cache the response now by record for better performance. And second, transferring DNS messages larger than 512 bytes requires support of extension mechanisms for DNS, or eDNS, and that the forwarder does not actively truncate oversized packets. As an important DNS feature, we expect that eDNS will be increasingly supported by software vendors and DNS operators. And finally, the DNS forwarder does not verify the response, such as by requerying the victim domain. And this is also the case for a number of our tested implementations. We examine the attack against several DNS forwarder implementations. We start from 16 home router models from 16 vendors and all of them have DNS forwarding features. By real attacks in a controlled environment, eight models are found vulnerable, and we successfully inject rogue records into the forwarder's cache. We also test seven kinds of popular DNS software, which can be configured as DNS forwarders, and two of them are found vulnerable. We have been contacting the affected vendors and have received some feedbacks. Two home router vendors have released firmware patches in order to mitigate the attack. And also, we perform a nationwide measurement study to estimate the population of clients that are using the vulnerable DNS forwarders. By collaborating with our industrial partner, we perform checks on 20,000 mobile clients, which are mostly located in China. Due to ethical reasons, we do not launch real attacks against the devices, but only check whether the attack conditions are satisfied by the DNS forwarders. As a result, we find that around 6% of our collected clients are under risk of this cache poisoning attack. And finally, some discussions. To mitigate the attack, DNS forwarders can add additional checks on responses they receive, such as enabling DNSSEC, or perform requery of the CNAME chain and the victim domain name. However, this solution brings performance overhead and defeats the purpose of DNS forwarders, as they are now acting in the recursive mode. Another solution is to cache the DNS responses as a whole, rather than individual DNS records. It breaks one of the attack conditions, and we recommend it as the short-term solution. Our study also shows that the definition and role of DNS forwarders have not been clear yet, resulting in diversified implementations. And as a result, we believe more specific guidelines for DNS forwarders are needed in the future. And that is my talk today. Thank you very much.